You want to call the meeting to order? Oh, yeah. We'll call the meeting to order. It's Walt Robinson, vice chair. I will be conducting the meeting until we have a chairman, which will be an item on the agenda tonight. Robert, would you uh, call the roll? Uh, Member Eisner? Present. Uh, Member Key? Here. Member Cabal? Member Merrill? Here. <laughs> Uh, Member Robertson? Here. Uh, Vice Chair Robinson? Here. Member Roser? Here. Okay. I do want to um, uh, note that Member Merrill is participating remotely as uh, allowed by the Brown Act. Um, and so we will, when we do take votes, they will be a roll call just so that we get everybody correctly. Okay. And and is Patricia Cabal still a member? I she sent in a resignation letter. Oh, I didn't get that. Did oh, you didn't? Did you try to contact her? We did. We, we've been unsuccessful. And it's, Okay. She travels a lot. I talked to her right after the last meeting, after okay. she wasn't there. Said she had medical issues and didn't say this, but I certainly got the impression she okay. was not participating. Yeah, we, we've been working behind the scenes to resolve. And if she sent something in, we'll locate that. Okay. okay. Address it. Thank you. Okay, and then we have uh, Council Member Liaison de Goya. Yeah, I'm here. All right. Okay. So we go to the first item, which I think is public comments. Are there any comments about any item that is not on the agenda but is within our jurisdiction? I see Mr. Frederick, who has his hand up. So please go to the mic. Talk loudly so that we get a wonderful recording. Is it is it on? Yes. Am I gone? Okay, uh, I'm here to talk about the playground. Now I know it's on your agenda, but it's a different scope of the of it, so it's not really not on your agenda. And it's in reference to both process, current status, and future. Okay, and process, uh, my concern is that staff made a decision to build a new kids playground and it never got to the park and rec committee before the decision was made uh and that i believe the process ought to be the residents should get involved before we even think about spending 1.2 million dollars on something that's for the residents so that's a process question status question is i understand the status if i understand from rick and the team today is that the 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 council has agreed to spend around two hundred thousand dollars, and and folk and have Interwest build, do a design, and and have for construction management, et cetera, of a kids' playground, and should it go further, then a larger number will be required in the future to build the actual playground. So the two, the money being done being spent now and agreed to, is for a kids' playground only, but only for the design con and construction management, et cetera not to actually build it. Is that correct? Is that is that a correct understanding? We don't respond to public comment. Yeah, I don't think we respond to public comment. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Then I'm assuming that's a correct <clears throat> you say. So now my comment is I believe in park and rec you should think broader and think to what the what the actual residents want in the park. And there's a growing desire for senior exercise and balance issues. They're in, in new parks now. They're building special senior areas. The senior task force has designated this as a topic they would like to have considered by the council. Uh, and so as a result, I think before the cart goes too far down the road, the, the, the park and rec committee, the new subcommittee should be thinking about perhaps we are a little too narrow in our design. So I think you need to step back one and say, before we go too far down this bike, let's think about whether there's residence requirements. Now, again, there are 700 students in the kind of four to, to 12 year old series uh, time uh, age frame, which would use a, a playground. In the in this town, if they go to school in this town, they're already got a playground in their school that's open 24 seven every day a week. If they don't go to that school, they can still use those playgrounds. So every kid has a playground in Atherton. Plus we have playgrounds around us all the way uh, in Menlo Park, Redwood City, et cetera. And many of the newer homes have their own playground. So I would argue there's probably not an overwhelming, absolute and critical requirement for kids to have playgrounds. It would be nice to have one. It's a nice thing to do. We should have one. But there is a requirement 
for seniors to have a place they can go and exercise and to, and to do balance techniques, et cetera. And if you look at the data, which I can send to all of you, and I've sent already to some to, to the acting chair, uh, there are senior, senior exercise and balance things being done in parks is a major trend. So that's something I think you should consider because there's 1,700 seniors over the age of 65 uh, that we could, they could use that versus 700. Additionally, the other thing you may remember a couple of years ago, the, the plan was to build a dog park and it got very close. Rick knows more than I do. I don't know the details behind it, but there's a plan to build a dog park, which I understand was stopped because of the, the construction of the town center. That was just, that's your say. We, uh, we have 2,500 or more people with dogs. You know, we should consider a dog park as well. So before we rush off and spend the money, I think you want to find out what the residents really want. Not what the staff thinks you, they want, but what the residents want. And I believe if you survey the residents, you'll find a growing interest in something outdoors for seniors, uh, for balance and strength, et cetera, and a place to get together and talk and meet people. Same thing true with dog park, place to take your dog, go off leash. In fact, they go together. There are many seniors I've talked to uh, who basically don't walk their dog as much as they should. If they could take them to a dog park and let them run and meet other seniors, that'd be a nice thing. So all I'm asking is the, the, the new subcommittee, expand your scope, think bigger, and decide what's really the residence. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the comments. I think they were actually more direct to an item on the agenda, but we will appreciate your comments. Um, okay, can we, uh, Any? oh, I'm sorry, Robert, are there any emails or other information we've gotten where people would like to have a public comment that way? I haven't received any. Thank you. So let's move on to approval of the minutes. Anybody have any comments or any other items? And if not, would anybody move to approve them? So moved. Second. Thank you. So now we will move uh, on. We have to have vote. Hold, hold on. I'm just. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, the vote, please. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 <clears throat> I'm abstaining. I didn't attend the last meeting, right. so I don't know what happened. Abstention, abstention is noted. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to the budget update. And Robert you Barron, be able to would you please yeah. hold forth? Audio's off or whatever. Can you hear us, Frank? I, well, he now he can't. Well, he, he was off. His his voice was off. Can you hear me? I can't. Uh, hello. Okay, I am sharing my screen. We're just putting the financial information on the screen, Frank. I don't know if you can see yep. that. I, I can see it. Yep. Okay. And let me make sure. Okay. So, this is my thank you. Yeah. Thank you, um, Park and Recreation Committee, um, Mr. Robinson, and committee members. Uh, my name is Robert Barone. I'm the finance director for the town of Atherton. Uh, I was asked to come to the your meeting to present um, our uh, budget report. Um, provided in your staff report, in your packet, is the year to date um, park uh, budget for fiscal year 22 23. And I just want to just highlight um, real quick that um, the total. Um, Total, total tennis, tennis program expenditures was 97,282 for the fiscal year 22-23. Of that 97,000, um, 87,000 of it was, as you recall, the uh, court's um, one and two overlay uh, that we, we did uh, this fiscal year. The committee can recall in 21-22, we did uh, overlay on courts four, five, and six. Um, that was 116,000 in fiscal year 21-22. Um, and so the fiscal year we just ended, 22, 23, um, the remaining courts one and two overlay were completed and then as well, um, conditioning of the clay court um, at the tennis courts. 
the year to date uh, park maintenance expenditures is 730,000. 730, Majority of that is the professional services, which includes um, the uh, Bright View and MCE component of the maintenance of the park. Operation maintenance was 247,000. Um, in there, majority of that is the facility repairs and maintenance for the uh, within the park uh, facilities. 128,000 of that is majority. We had some uh, water line replacement, sewer line replacement um, by the Gilmore House uh, and the water uh, at the Gilmore House, as well as we had some maintenance um, within the Gilmore House, about 90, uh, 33,000 um, at house painting and sewer line replacement, about 38,000. Uh, water line about 11,000 and the place cool sewer also went down um, we had, that was about 15,000 so total uh, facility repairs and maintenance was about of that 247,000 128,000 with those items um, the park uh, department 58 the park programs was a year-to-date revenue uh, expenditure of 115,966 uh, for the fiscal year so total park programs, tennis, park maintenance program main expenses, it was 943000 for the fiscal year. Um, we were below budget to $1.1 million um, for those programs. And um, rolling down to the revenues uh, year to date for 22-23, we're at 176000 in revenue, park program revenue. That is our uh, social fees, meeting fees, weddings, park day use. Uh, uh, fees for 176,000 for the year. Property rental at the play school was 53,420. Uh, right below that is our tennis fund revenue of uh, 50,615. So total park program and tennis revenue at the park for the year was 280,357. And in conjunction with our uh, above expenditures of 943, our um, excess or deficiency uh, for the park was 663000 meaning that our cost recovery at the park for last year was 29.71%. Um, and you see there's some previous actuals for the last couple fiscal years. I think um, we all know the COVID year, uh, 1920. Uh, fiscal year, if you look at the cost recovery for the park, it was at 51.03%. At that time, we had a more robust um, rental fees at the park. Uh, again, um, after COVID, uh, there's we have 20 and 21. Those were pretty much uh, that year, hardly any program activity, revenue activity at the park due to COVID um, measures. And we're starting to ramp up with uh, rentals at the park. So it's just um, a delay in getting back to our pre-COVID um, revenue uh, rentals at the park. I have any questions? Uh, Robert, let me yes, ask you a question about the play school. Yes, sir. Why do we keep budgeting it at budgeting, budgeting at 89,533 when it hasn't been anywhere near close to that? Great, great question, Mr. Robinson. Um, uh, prior to COVID, the, the play school rent rental revenue was around that amount, an 89,000. Um, Due to the nature of COVID and the tendency of what uh, for kids, uh, there was a number of amendments that were made at the council level uh, with the park, um, with the play school. So now it is more of a, um, a reduced lease, but it's mainly not reduced, but it's more at a, a population driven by attendance. So those um, rates have gone, have, have adjusted. So uh, that, is it going to be a year-to-year -year basis going forward? Staff will will budget um, accordingly, uh, as of of what we anticipate will be about the fifty-four thousand uh, range in revenue. Again, it's be, uh, due to since COVID, the play school has been on a uh, a reduced rental lease based off of uh, student population um, well, at their school. You said before they were making that number. Here's four years where they haven't come close. Uh, so I just wondered, why would we budget that again? Are we okay. saying that's all COVID related? We heard a report mm -hmm. from the, uh, the owner there oh, at yeah. school. And it looks to me like there's absolutely no chance 
that's going to happen. Correct. And, 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 and we'll make the note of it and, and staff will, will adjust that down to be more reflective. That budget was the previous, um, prior to COVID, but, uh, yeah, it, rental. It, it's also not just COVID it, because of, there's a large expansion of TK in, in so, the area. And a lot of those correct. kids are going to the TK programs that the right. elementary yeah. schools are running. And now that it's in, in, and that's reflective now that their, their rent is based off of their enrollment, it, yeah. their student enrollment. So, um, it's more, um, uh, it, it, there's some compression there, but it's more accurate based off of a moment. TK is transitional kindergarten. Yeah. Right. Um, a question on the tennis program expenditures. Um, the Of the 97,000, what percent was the overlay project versus kind of core maintenance? Of, of that, pretty much majority of almost 90 percent so that eighty seven thousand you see there yep is mainly um eighty eighty four thousand of that was the um uh actual overlay and four thousand was the um conditioning of the the courts so of that ninety seven thousand probably about ninety percent of that okay is is was the overlay the um the remaining nine thousand is the um the, the maintenance with our or maintenance, okay. Right view crews, and and would we is there any breakout that you have of the clay court versus the hard court? Like, is is the clay court significantly more cost than the uh, the hard courts? Let let me answer that. Okay. <laughs> um, so the general maintenance of the clay court is handled by um, player capital. And so um, we assist them sometimes with purchasing some stuff like uh, extra clay, but generally speaking, they're doing the day-to-day -day maintenance on that. We have um, Bright View Landscaping that does the court blowing and um, a couple of my other minor things in and around the tennis courts. We do the rekeying of the locks at the tennis courts every year, um, but the general day-to-day stuff on the clay court, it's going to be, um, what do you call it, uh, player capital. Um, and so that's the $9,000 line item that Robert was um, mentioning on the, um, on, on the sheet. Okay. The, the mix of uh, social and meetings and classes, <clears throat> seem to be kind of a little odd because there's like zero meetings but correct you know, social seems social and classes seem to well classes are kind of in the mediocre range and i think that more of that is uh, how we used to um identify what was meetings what was social and it looks like they're most likely they're all getting lumped into that social category okay uh so um i think as far as to clean up i think we'll probably just maybe do away with the meeting fee i mean the category I yeah mean, but list it all as social because that's how we're um if it's not a wedding so it's after it's not quote unquote losing business no no okay. it's, it's it's just not, the it's just yeah okay. it's it's getting um grouped into the social um category and you'll you'll see in your monthly report from the parks going on where those categories are listed you know with the different reservations yeah. It's that category that's, okay. that it is. Mm -hmm. it, it, that's a place where it defines. I, 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 every month I've wondered what's the difference between social class and meetings. I've never known what the definition Yeah, I'm going to say that it's, uh, I'm going to say a lot of it is a holdover from when we had, um, I forgot who the previous vendor was in terms of how they annotated. Oh, catering by Dana. Yeah, catering by Dana, how they annotated things. Um, and we actually collected, they took a percentage of the fee based on what was going on. Oh, the type of class. The, the type of contract that we had with them. And so the um, the distinction now with Cater 2 is we're not sharing our fees anymore. Um, and so the i think we can talk with catered to about 
category references that may be more appropriate or more meaningful in terms of how we look at them. So that's something that we can talk about with them. And the catering service fee is happily way over budget. So I, I guess we'll adjust that. In Co future. Correct. We'll, we'll adjust that. And, and the, that is um, the town gets uh, catered to has uh, catering exclusivity yeah. for events um, at the park that they, that they have. So we get a 10% off of that they're catering so when they had events last year they, they had significant events um catering events mm -hmm. and so that that um correct we, we we anticipated uh not to receive that much in catering uh service fee but um we'll, we'll follow up closely with them on their forecasting for the next year to see okay. where they're at yeah. i was gonna say if you recall at the last meeting when we got the report from cassidy i wasn't there revenues this this is last fiscal year mm -hmm. yeah. this fiscal year a bit different and robert was going to go into that okay next. yeah well correct yeah this still, yeah if there's a number of questions i guess we'll go on to that this is the year to date for 22 23 just to okay. um provide to the committee One very small request yes sir uh, in the last column you've got the percentage of budget correct i i didn't update it this is at 10 months right no, this is this is the twelve months. It, uh, it should be a hundred, hundred percent. Year to date, June twenty three. So it should be twelve months. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It says it says it's at eighty three. Yeah, I mean, was, that was what I was going to mention to the committee that that was I I need I didn't update that part. Yeah, that number doesn't. 